we now have our first reading that Sam David is going to read for us. The first reading is from Acts chapter 2 from verses 1 to 21. And this can be found in page 1093 of NIV version. Acts chapter 2 from verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be the tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. Now, they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews, from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who, speak, who are speaking are Galileans? Then how is that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Syria, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the leaven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by Prophet Joel. In last days, God will pour out the Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servant, both men and women, I'll pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs of the earth, blood and fire and billows of the smoke. Sun, the sun will be turned to darkness and moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls in my name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading is from John 20, verses 19 to 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. So it's our pleasure to welcome the Right Reverend Dr. Robert Innes, Bishop in Europe, to preach to us this morning. And at this point, the slides you see on the screen will disappear and you will see Bishop Robert only. Thank you very much indeed, Heather, and it's a delight and joy to be with you. It is the great feast of Pentecost, and I very much hope to be back in our church building at uh, Holy Trinity, Rue Captain Crespel. In some parts of the diocese, we can use our buildings again. Greece, Germany, Denmark, Austria, Switzerland. Even in Italy last week, we countersigned an order with Prime Minister Conte, allowing us to resume worship. But in Belgium, we have longer to wait. There have been some very welcome signs of deconfinement. My dentist is now open. 
And equally important, so is my barber. Seldom has a haircut felt so good. But not yet our church buildings. So how are we to understand Pentecost in 2020, in a time of partial confinement, in the era of COVID-19? First of all, I think my longing to be in Christian community is a thoroughly Pentecostal one. For it was when the disciples were all together in one place that the Holy Spirit came upon them. And one of the most important impacts of the Spirit's presence is an intensification of Christian community. Having been filled with the Spirit, the disciples spent much time together in the temple devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. So we're right to miss our buildings, our gatherings, our weekly celebration of Holy Communion. And our hearts cry out with the psalmist, How long, O Lord? How long will this virus cramp and constrain our lives? Until the summer, for a year, for five years? How long must we live a restricted life? There is much to mourn in the era of COVID-19, and not by any means least, the loss of the physical gathering of the Christian community. Aside from the medical risks and the economic risks, there is great emotional risk with COVID-19. And that emotional risk is connected with loneliness. For people in our diocese, the diocese in Europe, loneliness is already a hazard. Many of us are living in countries that are not our maternal home. And during a lockdown, the sense of aloneness can become intense, especially for the isolated, the single, widow or widower. Right back in Genesis chapter 2, the Lord God reflected <clears throat> that it wasn't good for the man to be alone. A psychologist told me recently that people need two significant interactions with another person per day to stay mentally healthy. But then another element of Pentecost attracts our attention, namely the Spirit's role in overcoming barriers between people. Pentecost is a language miracle. Language is the biggest barrier between people, bigger even than physical distancing, because language embodies attitudes and traditions and culture. And if you don't speak someone's language, you can't understand, you can't relate. What happens at Pentecost is that the Holy Spirit miraculously overcomes the language barrier so that Jews from countries all around Asia Minor and North Africa hear the Galileans speaking, each in their own native tongue. It is extraordinary. The Spirit brings people together, overcoming the barriers between them. So I want to say that the emotional and indeed the holy spiritual way of dealing with COVID-19 has to involve overcoming the barriers between people and combating loneliness. That means keeping in touch with family and friends, phoning the isolated elderly, visiting where possible, and having enriching interaction with people over Zoom where we can. All these things seem to me to reflect the Spirit's intentions, because the overcoming of interpersonal barriers and the building of spiritual community is truly the Pentecostal work of God's Holy Spirit. Pentecost draws people in and draws people together, but it also sends people out. The book of the Acts of the Apostles, which really should be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit, records the remarkable spread of the gospel from Jerusalem all around the Mediterranean as far as Rome, taken by Paul and Barnabas and Mark and Luke and their colleagues. The message these men proclaimed is so well known to us that we very easily miss its revolutionary content. God has made Israel's crucified Messiah the saviour and Lord of all. The salvation promised to Israel is embodied in Jesus and overflows to include the Gentile world too. All are included. In Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female. All are one in Christ. Now in a Roman world, where Caesar was titled Saviour and Lord, a world which observed strict social divisions between men and women, patricians and plebeians, Gentiles and Jews, freemen and slaves, 
and where crucifixion was the terrible, humiliating punishment meted out to slaves, this gospel message was either incredible or revolutionary. Yet St Paul and his companions insisted, in Jesus God has chosen the weak to shame the strong. He had chosen the foolish to shame the wise. Christ crucified foolishness to the Greeks, but to those who are called for both Jews and Greeks, the power of God and the wisdom of God. It was and is a scandalous message, a message that turns everything upside down. This was good news for the poor, the rejected and the downtrodden in every place and time. And this movement of the spirit recorded in the book of Acts was like a stone thrown into a pond with effects rippling onwards and outwards in subsequent ages. So we see movements of the spirit in the Celtic Christianity of the 7th and 8th centuries, which sent out men like Boniface and Willibrord to Germany and the Netherlands. In the Roman Catholic missionary orders in the Middle Ages, the spread of Christianity across Africa in the 19th and early 20th centuries, and maybe the spread of the gospel in China today. And always there is the possibility of someone arising like a William Wilberforce or a Martin Luther King, who see in the conditions of their own age, the gospel's same potential to turn the world upside down. So to return to my question, what does Pentecost mean in 2020? What may God be saying to us in our COVID-19 era? Three suggestions. Firstly, we have, to our surprise, learnt a new esteem for some of those whose occupations are traditionally lowly. The cleaners, the care assistants, those who dispose of our refuse, it is these folk who keep us safe and well. They are our contemporary heroines and heroes. How extraordinary, how Pentecostal, that we should see in the conditions of COVID-19, God raising up the lowly and exalting the humble. Secondly, the Spirit has enabled us to be church in a different key. Because the church is a creature of the Holy Spirit, it is remarkably resilient. Close down its buildings and it just morphs into another shape. As the ditty puts it, our building is shut and so is the tomb, but the church is still open. Come join us on Zoom. <laughs> Likewise, we are learning to nourish our faith through other means. If regular Eucharistic gatherings are impossible, we use daily prayer. We read our Bibles more, we pray at home. We listen to podcasts and we join in worship as best we can. Indeed, all the evidence is that people are praying much more than normal. And then thirdly, I believe the Spirit is teaching us a new sensitivity to the environment. How providential that COVID-19 arrived in springtime. So we've had more opportunity to watch nature unfold, to listen to the birdsong, to smell the roses. What is more, how striking that the measures needed to control the coronavirus have so much in common with the measures needed to address the much bigger issue of climate change. Using plane travel much less, walking and cycling much more, living a simpler life. To our surprise, we've learned that whole populations, indeed the whole planet, can adopt big lifestyle changes if we have to. I really believe the Holy Spirit is leading us into new ways of understanding ourselves, what is important to us, and our human capacity to change. And that gives me real hope. So Pentecost 2020 in the era of COVID-19 is certainly stretching and demanding, but it is not unfruitful. We've learned to esteem those whose work has often gone unnoticed and unrecognised. We've learned afresh to value our buildings and our physical gatherings, and we've developed ways of sustaining and building a community when those buildings are not available to us. Yes, we know the longing for normality, for sociability, for the warmth of human contact and a hug. Yet we've also learned how technology can enable us to make community 
as best we can. And we have seen in the big lifestyle changes required of us by the COVID-19 crisis, the possibility that similar lifestyle changes might be possible for the even bigger challenge posed by the environmental crisis. So Pentecost 2020, thanks be to God for the great Pentecostal movement of the Holy Spirit recorded in the Book of Acts, for its echoes and reverberations down the centuries, and for the surprising, disturbing, and yet comforting work of the Holy Spirit in the circumstances and opportunities of today. Amen.